How are we doing? Good. Man. How about you? Good. Doing well. So I thank the rookies for the last three days, and, and what do we get out of that? Well, it's really a, a, a process for us to slow things down with the, with the entire group, right, and understand and obviously get reps there on the field. You know, if it's uh, plays versus air or schemes versus air, that's fine. Uh, but also the reason why. You know, the reason why we do things and kind of slow down and explain exactly what we're talking about when it talks to, you know, whatever the concept may be, a pass concept, how we're blocking the perimeter uh, defensively, how we're running this certain scheme. And to me, it was really good because uh, you also have time in the meetings to for them to ask questions um, in the meetings and also get the whole process of it. So I thought it was fabulous. Um, you know, and it's really about refining, right, refining your skills and fundamentals. So I thought the guys did a great job with that. Um uh, the last few days, and it's really good. Uh, you know, the one thing with, uh, you know, the development of Caleb, you know, in terms of what he's gotten uh, to do this offseason has been outstanding. You know, taking him from knowing really uh, just a little bit about the scheme from that pro day at USC all the way to where he is now, and uh, it's uh, it's really good. He's been able to really refine uh, his understanding of, of the scheme, and and obviously we've got a lot of work to do in, in the summertime. You know, the, my, my point to the rookies was it was simple as, is that where we are right now is a place where we can't be. we got to be at a level up. we got to level up uh, two spots uh, in those four weeks in the preparation of being able to say, say the call, see it in your mind, right, and then go ahead and execute it. You know, and that could be drawing it, you know, in the summer. It could be actually executing it if he's got guys out there doing it with him and then uh, owning it. You know, then you got to own it. So that's uh, that's the biggest thing, the biggest step we got to take uh, with with Caleb and also with with the rest of the offense and, and defensive guys too, because uh, the separation in the NFL is in our preparation. You know, everybody says they want to be a winner, and no one wants to be a loser. Well, you got to put the time in to be a winner, and uh, that takes uh, focus, attention to detail, and it takes uh, determination and dedication. So uh, the guys are up for that. They're excited about that. We got a plan for each guy, and. Um, and it's a good plan and a good process to go through the next four weeks to level up a couple steps. Open up the questions. Uh, about that plan. Caleb was just talking a little bit about that. So, all right, how much of that is you guys sort of giving him specific things that he should be working on through these next four weeks versus also just trusting the player, you know, to, to get the time off, the rest, and handle things how, you know, you expect a, a player to during this time? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that. Uh, a good coach sets it up for his players, um, and, and we and we do that. Uh, we set it up for them. We give them the tools to use. And again, it's on their own time and everything, all that. But uh, I think you give them the give them the keys of the car, but you also show them how to drive. And uh, that's that's what a good coach does. Have you learned anything about Caleb over these last couple months or weeks that you've worked with him that you didn't know before? Oh, uh, he's a pretty funny guy. You know, so I'm learning that about him. So he's got a real good sense of humor. Uh, he's really good with the guys. He's got a good way with the other teammates. So uh, I didn't know he was going to be that good. With Amagachi, is he still on track to be good to go? Stuff? Yeah, we, we project that. We project that. Again, we'll have to see how the rehab goes in the summer. And uh, we project all our guys that we missed some time um, to be back uh, to, to start camp. Uh, but, again, we'll see that as we go. What did you, what did you have of his growth then? given he's been limited. Yeah, just so the mental side of it. Yeah, just the mental side of it, his retention, his be, ability to spit, you know, concepts back, be it protection, blocking schemes. Uh, you know, he's been good at it that way. Well, what kind of thought have you given to using the preseason games, not only for Caleb, but for the entire offense and trying to juggle, obviously, an extra game tacked in there and how you're going to do that this year? Yeah, uh, that's a process that we're going through right now. Um, I, I think it's something that we have to uh, look at and talk about, which we'll be doing here in the next couple of days. Um, you know, I'm not going to forecast out exactly what it is right now because uh, um, I haven't made any decisions yet. So I want to make sure that I visit with everybody. I'm in the process of exit meetings with all the coaches right now, and I got about half of them done. So I got to finish that up, and then I'll be able to uh, think on that and do what's best for the Bears. What's kind of the tug of war you go through with understanding a rookie quarterback needs some exposure, but you don't want to overexpose him, obviously. You know? Yeah, there's definitely that. I mean, you look at last year's reps. I mean, you know, C.J., Bryce, Richardson, they all got between 45 and 65 reps in the preseason. So you look at those things and look at the past, look at, you know, go deeper than that, go back a few years. So you're always looking at that, gathering the data. data and we're, like I said, we're going to do what's best for the Bears. What's the biggest thing that Mercedes brings uh, in his 19th season? Leadership, 
Yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous uh, leader, and he's got a great way about him, and uh, he's got great wisdom, you know, great wisdom and discernment, and he helps everybody in the building, uh, not just the players. He helps me in terms of the the feel for the team and, you know, where, where everybody is in terms of the players, and uh, he's been a tremendous leader uh, since I've known him, and uh, we're certainly excited to have him back. At the practice you announced last week against the Bengals, having won- It's here, by the way. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't memorize the preseason. You guys are sitting. You guys are sitting together. How about that? That's, I didn't plan that. That was fair. That was fair of you to. Uh, yeah, you were right. <laughs> the uh, having one practice versus two was that just a logistical thing, or was that like a result of learning last year? I know you had two practices against the Colts, and they ended up holding up the starters in the game. Yeah, that was uh, Cincinnati brought that to us. So that was really their their genesis of that. And I've, like I said, I've never done it, but Zach has done it. So he's got an experience with that. And uh, we talked about the practice and the out, outline of that and logistics of that. And uh, we're, we feel very comfortable. I just, I talked to him yesterday about it. So we're, we're, we're all set and we feel good where it is. I know you've talked since the beginning of the off season about how happy you were with the offensive staff you've assembled. How have you seen different coaches kind of slide into the right lanes in terms of, you know, who's dealing with what, particularly, you know, as it applies to Caleb and, you know, you've got this extra pass game coordinator now, quarterbacks coach, offensive coordinator, um, you know, you've got the uh, guy back from Italy, uh, as we established last week. Um, How would they all fit in, and is there a learning curve there? Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve, right, because you have new people coming together. So that relationship piece is always big, um, the chemistry of that. And then uh, learning how to communicate uh, effectively um, and efficiently together uh, to get to the right answer, not necessarily your answer. So that's got you got to make sure you're doing that well. And uh, you know, in, in offense, you really have a few guys that are like the guys that you got offense. You know, offensive coordinator with Shane, he's done a fabulous job of leading that group. And then you have an offensive line coach that's high in the run game and the prote- protections and all that. But um, in the addition of Thomas, has been great too, because now he gets to help tie that all together with Shane. Uh, so that's been really good. And I feel great about the new additions in terms of the position coaches. I mean, Chris Beatty is, is unbelievable. Uh, you know, Chad Morton's is really remarkable. Uh, you know, Jennifer's done a wonderful job. So there's, it's, uh, it's been good to see and the chemistry is strong, you know, and uh, those guys are coming in, the new guys are coming in year three and they understand well, how we do things. Um, I had a bunch of meetings with the coaches to start the off season to kind of outline the standards and making sure they understand what and how we do things here. And uh, they bought into that, and uh, it's been great. The, the fact that Thomas has been through this a year with the number one overall pick, what, how does that help you? Good. It's been great, and I've asked them all along the way how, how, how it's going in terms of our preparation and how we're doing things and what we need to do better uh, based on the experiences that he had um, you know, last year. And that's been great to be able to have a, a sounding board to be able to bounce those ideas off of him. You talked about your plan for the players over the next five weeks, but what have you learned about like your personal plan between work and rest and what your routine has become now in this break before camp? Yeah, I, I have a hard time getting fully away from it. Um, you know, I'll take a few days to do that, but I like to take the mornings when it's quiet and be able to, you know, if I'm outlining training camp, the in, in part of that, and you know, or the season, which we've already done both those things, but I'll go back and look at it. And, uh, you know, it's important that I, I, I spend time in the morning thinking about, you know, the team and the football uh, and, and the players that, that, that are on our squad. So, uh, but th- then the rest of the day, I kind of let it go and reset the next day, but uh, try to enjoy some golf and, you know, obviously enjoy my girls and my ladies, and so it's going to be fun. It seems like uh, the, Bengals, the Bengals practice that on fields one and two or three and four. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> three and four. Okay. Yes, sir. You know why? Because of the rain plan. If it rains, you can jump right in there, Perfect. and it's not an issue. Okay. Matt, with Marcy. I, I have a real question. Actually. Okay, go ahead. You can go first. Thank you. <laughs> with, uh, with Rome, usually you draft a guy, a wide receiver especially, number nine overall, that guy is expected to come in can be the focal point of the offense, or a focal point of the offense. It's a little different because the guys you already have. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you make sure you guys aren't going too slow with Rome, that you are able to get everything that he is able to do as a rookie? Yeah, I don't I don't think we're going too slow because we're giving him a lot. Uh, he's playing multiple positions, uh, and I really think that he's going to uh, be able to handle that those concepts. And, 
you know, we all know the benefit of being with the two veterans, you know, having those, seeing those guys, you know, understanding how they operate during the course of a week. That's going to be really good. They're going to help them through training camp, you know, because there's wisdom there with, with years and experience. Uh, but I really believe that uh, uh, he's going to have the ability to take off because of the other players. You know, you're not going to be able to hone in on one guy. Say we just had him and he was the number one right now. You know, so you'd be like, wow. You know, so they could really do some things to him defensively, but you're not going to be able to do that versus our crew. And to that end, it seems like everyone you talk to about Roman is past or present talks about his feel for the game and his, his IQ. I'm just curious how you describe what you've experienced that with him since you got to know him. In the spring. Yeah, I just, you know, some guys just have a knack to do it, right? You know, they can see the pictures, the drawings, you know, in the classroom, and they can apply that right to the field. And uh, he's able to process a bunch of information at the same time um, and then take it to the field. And, um, you know, he's really good that way. And he's, you know, as, he, as you know, you follow his career at Washington, at University of Washington, mm -hmm. he did, he's done a great job of making himself a great player. And uh, he's going to continue to grow that way. Matt with Mercedes, one, we talked to a lot of players last year, and the, the biggest takeaway is about how he's kept his body that at this stage for 19 seasons now. How did you see that? It's just the way he works reflect on to some of the younger players, considering how young this roster was last year. Yeah, it, it is remarkable. You know, you think about that, and uh, you know, there's there's normal human beings, and there's other people that play, you know, 17, 18, 19 years in the NFL. So. Um, not sure how to explain that. Uh, it's a lot of that's God given in terms of how how God put him together, and, uh, in terms of uh, being healthy and all that. But he works at it. He works at his uh, the nutrition part of it, the strength and conditioning, and more importantly, he works at the flexibility. I think that's where he really gains his edge, is the flexibility and balance um, that he has and what he works on. And uh, he does some different things that way, and um, he's going to be great for our locker room. Let's get right to some questions. And what have you uh, what have you learned about Caleb over the past six to eight weeks? I think uh, you know confirming a lot of the things that uh, that we had gathered during the draft process, uh, his competitive nature, his his willing to his willingness to learn, his his uh, desire to know the why on everything that's happening, so that he's not just out there. Um, you know, robotic, trying to just run a play. He's out there really learning it, really understanding it. Uh, no, there's a, a long way to go in terms of, you know, going from one offense to another, uh, but not skipping any of the steps and knowing uh, in order to achieve greatness, he has to put in a lot of hard work, and, and he's really backed that up with what he's demonstrated so far in the time we've been around him. How did you see him manage those ups and flows, especially when the defense would you know, understandably win a, win a drive, win a session? How did you see him kind of manage those expectations and bounce back? Yeah, I think that's a key part of, of playing quarterback and really playing in the NFL at all the positions, knowing that uh, I've mentioned this before, everyone you play against is good. You know, defenses have great players all around. Offenses have great players all throughout the league. And so there's going to be some some good times. There's going to be some bad times. And, you know, figuring out how you react to the, the ups and downs in a nice, even demeanor. And the uh, thing we preach is, you know, let's say there's about 65 plays each game. You know, how can you play 65 individual snaps regardless of the outcome of the previous play uh, so that you can stay locked in, stay focused. And so the, the time in the offseason for us is about training our minds as well as our bodies to react the right way, uh, no matter what the outcome of the previous play was, knowing that there, there's a job to do on the next play. And not to say that the game's void of emotion, because there's going to be emotions, but how do you control those emotions? How do you handle them uh, with that, that open mindset, that growth mindset? And I think Caleb's really embraced that, and you don't see one particular play impact the next series. He's learned from them and moved on. What is the relationship? Like, you guys are obviously getting to know each other as well mm -hmm. and working together. What, how, how has that communication gone and kind of building that chemistry? Yeah, I think uh, as far as developing relationships with anybody, the more time you're around people, the more time you get to interact um, face to face and get to know each other, uh, the tighter that relationship becomes. And I think uh, for him and I, you know, his ability to listen and, and want to learn, you know, every single day, uh, he brings it. He, he walks in that, that quarterback meeting room and, and he's ready for, you know, what's that information of the day, um, you know, 
texting me all sorts of different times of, you know, hey, you know, asking the whys on different plays. And, and so all of those things go together. And then having a chance to talk about things outside of football, because I mentioned before, you know, he's a, a you know, demonstrated his uh, ability on the football field, but now getting a chance to really know the person outside of football, uh, things that he enjoys. And, and, you know, same thing for me and what my family's about. And, and, and those things, I think, are all uh, areas that help us to, to grow closer. And then when the, the season starts, when there are uh, different, you know, ups and downs during the season. I think the closer you are with people, uh, the more willing you are to to listen and overcome hard times uh, during the season. And so we're just building up that armor, developing that relationship, and, and getting ready to go for this 2024 season. Would you say that you've thrown, like, the kitchen sink at him as far as everything in the offense or kind of just more, more spoon-fed along? Yeah, no, no physical kitchen sinks, but there's been a lot of plays. So, uh, you know, we've got, uh, no, we, we put a pretty good amount in because a part of this in my mind is to, in our minds as an offensive staff is to really, you know, build some volume in the offense, knowing that to see what all, all of our players can handle. We have a lot of different, uh, uh, pieces to that puzzle. Uh, so wanting to see what different skill sets, uh, are going to be able to handle different parts of our offense. Uh, and then with that goal of building that towards training camp and then into the regular season. So he's, he's dealt with a good amount of volume right now, and we'll continue to build on that until we get into a game plan mode. When you said that you guys weren't going to hold anything back from him mm -hmm. as far as like learning the offense, is that typical of a rookie, like someone like Caleb being able to handle that much and not necessarily have – I guess another metaphor would be training wheels. Sure. I think. I mean, I think every one of those situations are so individual-based. And so for us being around Caleb, seeing what he's able to handle, seeing what our other players are able to handle uh, with Austin and, and, and Brett and Tyson, the other quarterbacks in the room, I think really, uh, you know, day-to-day -day playing off, you know, how they're feeling. Uh, do they feel like we can uh, move on to the next install? And and for us during the off-season program, uh, we were able to really kind of continue on the whole way through uh, based on those guys' ability to grasp the information. To, to that end, to that end uh, we've seen a few first-year coordinators and first-year quarterbacks, and the lament is always the same. It's a work in progress. It's first year of the offense, and you know, it's a 17-game season. What hope do you have, especially with the expectations for this team, what hope do you have of some semblance of hitting the ground running with a first-year offense and a first-year quarterback and maybe not have some of the trials that most first-year offenses with new quarterbacks have? Mm -hmm. I think for us, it's about, you know, living in the moment, being where our feet are planted uh, uh, for us, especially on offense, you know, the, the 17 game season, we know that's a grind. There's a lot of different things that are going to happen uh, throughout the course of that season and, and knowing what goals and expectations might be, but having that narrow singular focus on what the day entails. I think that allows us and I know there's, there's different, uh, you know, storylines or different things that get written about the full broad picture outside the building. But for us inside the building, you know, it's hard to, to visualize much more than, you know, the next day, the next practice, the next week. And I think uh, living in that mindset really will help us, you know, armor up for the different uh, ebbs and flows that have happened in the past with those. And not to say that we're not aware of them. You know, you study around the league, you see different things that happen. Uh, and for us, like I said, like every season, every team's different, every situation's different. So I can't predict the future with that. I know we can work hard and, and work to put our best product on the field as soon as possible. But, but have you seen indications, I know it's early, but have mm -hmm. you seen indications even in this rudimentary stage that you can be more like the Texans where they're, they're the cop for this team, and it can, that you can be more like them than some of the other teams. Have you seen at least any indications that what you have, you can you can be that or, or be close to that? Yeah, I think we can be the best version of the 2024 Bears. And so, you know, comparisons to different teams in different situations, to me those uh, those aren't what we're looking at in terms of, of saying those are apples to apples. Those are different scenarios. There's different pieces of each scenario that we can pull from. But for us, we're just trying to be the best version of ourselves. And we feel like we have good pieces around, uh, you know, our offensive structure right now. And guys are bought in. The, the personalities are gelling. The, the people are great. And so with that, you know, the results will come. So we'll stick with the process. We'll stick with our daily improvement and that daily grind and then let the results happen. Along the lines of Mark's question, where do you expect Caleb to be once training camp does begin and he gets faster pace, he's had the sure. five weeks to, to build up for this? Where do you want to see him at that point? I think as he's done the whole time through, just that continue of the ownership of the scheme, of the operation, uh, we've talked a lot about what the offseason entails over this next uh, four-week stretch that we have before we report back for uh, rookies with, the, with uh, training camp there. And so the 
the uh, there is expectation there because that's studying that's that's putting in the work even though it's the downtime and you know on that that relentless pursuit of, of getting the edge and finding the edge and for him you know finding that edge going into training camp being better than he was when he left here today without the benefit of practices will be so much focused on the study and the watching tape and then throwing and, and working on his fundamentals. Gina, what do you here's want? about the structure what? of your staff, the you know, mm -hmm. passing game coordinator, uh, run game coordinator, quarterbacks coach, and so on and so forth. Just, is that something that you're used to from your previous stops of, of working with? Yeah, so the way we're set up has been pretty similar to the last uh, the last few stops, whether it was LA or, or in uh, Seattle, and was able to, you know, when they got on board here to, to build it un, under a similar uh, frame as that. So in your in your experience, I, I guess, what are the keys to making sure that kind of you're all on the same page, that you don't, that Caleb knows who to go to if he's got this or, or mm -hmm. that, and that the messaging's not changing? Yeah, I think that starts at, you know with the communication amongst ourselves within the staff, whether it's with uh, with Thomas Brown or Kerry Joseph, how we're working there with uh, Robbie Picasso or, or Ryan Griffin, the different guys that are going to be you know around the quarterback, uh, but knowing that there's still you know a, a, a voice that's coming from me that everyone's going to echo, and they've done such a great job of of being in sync, uh, knowing that you know who has different elements of the offense, uh, but then also you know making sure that you know we'll have great discussions during staff meetings, we'll have great discussions as we're watching film. Uh, I would hope that not, not everybody agrees with each other every single second of a meeting because that would mean everyone's just saying yes to say yes. So we'll have good, tough conversations uh, with the goal being, you know, what's right for, for our offense this year. Uh, and when we go and break those meetings uh, as a staff and then go join the players, we're all in the one unified front right there and, and presenting the same message to all of our players. And you talked about the expectations for Caleb over the next four weeks. What do you want him to work on? What do you want him to get by the end? What are the points to change? Yeah, I think for him it's about you know consider, uh, continuing to own the system, the operation. Uh, you know, with so many different things, you're new to a system, and you know whether it's uh, the new uh, coaches, new rookies, uh, new free agents that have come in the door, the players that have been here in the past. Uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities in, in so many different offensive systems, but they're not not all exactly the same. So the ownership of what every word means, with the goal being when we come to training camp and. You know, I say a certain uh, term that that clicks in right now in, in Caleb's brain knows exactly what we're talking about. We're on the same page because the further goal is game day, you know, when everything's happening. And, you know, it might be just a simple reminder in the headset. It might be uh, something at halftime. Like those things all happen uh, so quickly, like that brevity code that we train ourselves with and and getting on the same page on what certain terms are going to mean. You know, that's a really important part of the off season. So then now when he comes in to, to uh, start training camp, he's not thinking about any of those. Those are second nature and, and he's reacting the right way when he hears a certain uh, message there. Was the head start that he got just working on some of the fundamental concepts, was that noticeable when he got here with the full squad? Yeah, I think for us, when you go back to the, the volume or the uh, – the way we were able to start as an offense with a, a whole new group right there and, you know, with the way the draft picks are set up where the vets have already been going for a couple of weeks, then then the rookies join it. Uh, it was it allowed us to not have to take a, a step back to total square one where, um, you know, what we call it going back to the different verbiage. You know, he was able to know, hey, this is what we call certain routes. So you're not having to, you know, reteach those in the meeting. You're able to get into the full concepts, get into the reads, uh, get into the progressions there and just allow you to, st uh, you know, continue where the offense was rather than having to restart the whole thing. Hey, Shane, you just told us about um, Rome's Rome's ability got, to, um, you know, Rome's got a couple of really talented veterans that he can lean on mm -hmm. to help him. But who do you see as somebody who could really mentor Caleb, possibly from a player standpoint, <clears throat> not necessarily from a coach standpoint? Yeah, I think within the first of all within the quarterback room, I think um, with Tyson and, and Brett, those guys have been unbelievable. You know, they're uh, you know they have that that task like different uh, quarterbacks that are in different rooms of you know working on their own game, but then also knowing that it's their job to help and push the the starter there. And they've been they've been unbelievable with that, helping them along the way. And I think you know we have a different group of veterans at, at almost every position that have really embraced. The, all the young players that have come aboard because they know that you know we're all in this thing together. We're all working to to build to our uh, to our first game there. And so for them, like whether it's been Keenan or DJ Cole, Gerald, you know uh, Darnell, all these guys.
guys have really embraced that thought of let's li let's lift the uh, rookies up, you know, let's set them up for success down the road because that's going to in turn help all of us rather than, you know, the thought of let's keep the rookies, you know, on the side right there and do our own thing. So uh, we've embraced it. I think the, the culture that Coach Eberflus has developed here uh, within the building has really made that seamless. And so all the players feel, uh, you know, that we're creating a team right here. There's not a different different groups or different factions within the building. Fus told us about <clears throat> Rome's ability to process and take what he learns and put it on the field. And as a play caller, what does that do for you confidence-wise in terms of what he can absorb, what you can bring for him in this offense, and what's your excitement level to kind of get him incorporated? Yeah, I think the uh, you know any receiver that has that value of being able to play multiple spots, a line up and you know line up in different alignments, run a, a, a varied route tree, uh, I think is an, is a bonus for an offense. Uh, I think it you know allows less. Uh, tips and tells for a defense. And I feel like with us, with Rome and DJ Keenan, uh, Gerald Cole, we got a different group of guys uh, that can all be versatile in what they're asked to do. And so uh, the great thing about Rome going from a draft process to on the field now is seeing that, uh, you know, whether it was him talking about plays or whatever it was in the different uh, formal meetings and, and uh, pro days, all those things. And then it, that comes to life when he gets into a new system uh, and he's able to pick up an offense right away, uh, really understand all three of the receiver spots right away. Uh, so he's not uh, sitting there locked into one thing. He's really uh, picking this offense up as a conceptual learner, which I think only helps him for down the road uh, in the regular season when you start moving guys around. Hey, what is, what is, what is, kind of along those lines, what, what's your philosophy of like, letting a guy make mistakes, letting whatever, give him some picks where he's going to learn from it? versus trying to get things you know, as perfect as possible as quick as possible. Yeah, I think the goal is is perfection in everything we're striving to do, but we know that there's, you know, that's nearly impossible in this game, and I think uh, to live uh, or to play with, that, uh, you know, the fear of making a mistake is, is the wrong way for us to look at it. And so, uh, you know, I love in seven-on-seven, seven, which we know, hey, there's no defensive line, there's no threat of a run. There's a lot of things that aren't, you know, totally realistic to the, the actual game, but it's a great chance for quarterbacks to see what windows they can fit throws into. It's a great chance to time things up with their feet, see different voids in a clean picture, and, you know, with the, the, the final uh, – goal of that being, okay, let's bank these reps, what works, what doesn't work, then you put the defensive line, the offensive line in the mix, all right, so making those mistakes in seven on seven, okay, now I can learn from when we get to our team setting there, and then, like I said, mistakes are going to happen, so when they do happen, we're on to the next one, all right, uh, learn from it, grow from it, move on, and uh, and I, I think that's the way Caleb approaches the game, I think that's the way we want to approach it with all 11 guys on the field every single snap. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.